Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about being good as a software developer and what makes you good. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, what makes you a good software developer? And the short answer is, well, I would suppose that I would answer problem solving skills. That's pretty much it, I would say. And of course, being able to find and being able to find answers to your questions. Let me explain. So, the for the people who are not developers who may have stumbled upon my little hobby channel here, I'm going to tell you immediately. Developers don't know everything. I mean, you may think that we know everything and that we know all the things that are going on in a computer and that we are in a very similar fashion like the um, like Neo in the Matrix movies where we just see all the code as this falling thing and we can just understand the picture, the universe as uh, well, that, that's pretty I, I can get that that's what you think. But the reality is that most of, of us spend pretty much every day looking up different documentation and different blogs or Stack Overflow answers and so forth to just figure out roughly how this other thing that I haven't worked with before is how that works. And we do this over and over until we remember, oh, because I've been on this, you may have been on the same stack for a while now. Okay, so this thing works like that and this thing works like that. Even if you worked for years, I promise you, you won't know everything about the tools that you are using. Because the thing that humans usually remember are the things that we do every day. And if there's a million features that don't really fit your use case or you don't really use them, you're not going to know about them. That's why, well, trivia questions are fun sometimes, but I think that trivia questions is like one of the most embarrassing things for a company to put in a, in a, a technical interview. Because trivia questions, depending on how they're structured, might be these weird, it's like they try, it's like we're on a fucking game show where we're trying to get people, where we try to get people to fail. Who the hell cares about some obscure feature in your favor in this language? What, what, what do you prove by knowing about something that you're never going to use in practice? Why, why does that matter at all? Well, only an idiot would ask a question that is completely irrelevant for, for a worker that they're trying to hire, hire when there's so, many, so little time to figure out, do you actually know the things that we're going to have you, be, have you doing? I've been to a front-end interview once uh, upon a time where the first question was if I could do a, implement a quick sort algorithm. And I sat there and I, was, I went through the exercises and by the end of that interview I realized that they don't even know if I know CSS. They have no idea. Great interview. That's exactly what you want. And I actually turned down the job after that because I realized that they've probably done this exact same thing with all the other front-end engineers that are trying to hire. And I don't want to work in an environment where nobody, they haven't even checked if the person on the other side knows the first thing about how to actually do front-end development. But I digress. So with all of this information on the table, with all these cards laid on the table, I will argue to you that the first and foremost thing for a software developer, that at least from my perspective makes them a good software developer, is their ability to solve problems. Now that ties into the ability to find answers to your questions. Because problem solving as it is at the end of the day what you're going to do the majority of your time. Most of the time what you're doing is that you are using a set of tools that you sort of know and some tools you know really really well. If you work for long enough you're going to know a lot about something and then you have different problems that arise all the time. Everything from that there's a new stakeholder who wants this feature to that we need to change an existing feature to that we have a bug or something like that. And in all these cases which cover the majority of things that you're going to do, well, when you're creating something new, you need to be able to solve that problem. You need to be able to communicate effectively with the stakeholder and understand what they're actually trying to build. And then you have to use your skill, your technical skills to figure out, okay, how am I going to build this thing and building and build it usually from scratch. And in some cases, you're going to be asked to change any already existing feature. And that's another type of problem that you need to solve. Because now you this other thing I was saying, you need to be able to find out the answers to your questions 
in an effective manner, well, that's going to be really important because if it's a feature that you may have never worked on, you're going to have to figure out how all the, how the feature works in order to be able to make a confident change to the thing. You can't just willy-nilly change it because if it's a complicated feature, you really need to understand roughly how it works. And that information information gathering is a bitch and a half if you don't have a senior coworker or someone who actually built the thing around because then you're going to have to just use the code to understand what's going on. And I know there are a few elitist programmers out there who like to say that, well, we don't need no documentation because this answer is in the code. And I kind of go, yeah, that is true. But you have 10,000 lines of code and I have one hour to do this. I don't have time to reverse engineer the mess that you made in order to figure out how to solve this problem because we have a deadline. That's the problem with people who don't think about other people in software development because you design your solution for your situation where you might have tons of time and then the person who comes after you might have a completely different circumstance and you have made life much harder for them. That doesn't matter because you probably left the company already, right, for better prospects somewhere else. But that is a problem that you're going to face. It's a very common problem for you. And it's probably the thing that is the scariest for a lot of junior developers because it's hard. It's really hard and it takes skill and practice to get good at reading other people's code and understanding how something works. But it's a critical skill to have. And that's once again, the problem solving part of you. You need to be able to be out of your depth and then just deal with the situation. How do, I, how do I structure my problem in a way that makes it easy to, to solve? Usually we say that programmers are very good at thinking in terms of having a big problem, splitting it down to small pieces and then just executing on each piece and solving each individual problem. Break down the problem if it's at all possible. And lastly, you deal with bugs. It's this, and that's the same thing. It's a journey of discovery. You have no idea and nobody else that like your stakeholder, all they're gonna do is they're gonna come in and say, this thing here, it doesn't work. How do we fix it? And you go, well, I don't know. I need to look into it. Okay, you have this amount of time or like you have to solve it in this amount of time. And I, then you kind of go, all right, that's kind of like, in my case, I thought that uh, when first this ha started happening to me, I, I felt like it's kind of like having a math test. You have this thing that you don't really know because I, know I suck at math. You have this thing that you need to do within a certain amount of time. Do it, no pressure. And, you know, it's costing us money, no pressure. And I kind of go, okay, I'll try my best to solve this. And then you have to sit there and you have to, once again, similar to how, to how changing a feature works, you have to trace through all the code and figure out what the problem is. And that's why I argue that the most important thing for you as a software developer, that's the thing that dictates if you're going to survive or not, is your ability to just take any situation kind of as it comes and then just be prepared for that you're going to have a problem that you most likely don't know how to solve and you need to equip yourself with tools that makes it possible for you to solve those problems. And you, sometimes the solution is that you need to be able to talk to a person who barely understands what they're asking you to build so that you know how to build the thing. And sometimes it's gonna be, oh, okay, I need to figure out how somebody else has been thinking in order to figure out what the code is supposed to be doing. And remember, you're on time pressure as well. And then lastly, as a bug, it's the same thing. Something is not working as expected. Now you need to figure out how the whole thing sits to, fits together so you can figure out which piece is misbehaving. So what I want you to take away from this is that at least from my perspective, the thing that dictates if you're going to be a good software developer or not, or what makes you a good software developer, is your ability to deal with problems, to just problem solve whatever situation you get yourself into. And usually that is one part, being able to understand other people, to understand what, how to communicate effectively, to, understand, to fully get a good picture of the problem that you're solving, if that makes sense. And in some cases, it comes down to reverse engineering and figuring out, okay, someone has built this thing. How have they actually put all these things together? And in some cases, something is not working right. How, why isn't it working right? Why, what's the flow of events that is taking place and what, which piece is misbehaving in comparison to expectation? And sometimes in the beginning, that's gonna suck. This is gonna suck really bad because you're gonna have to ask other people for help if that's even possible. Hopefully that's possible. And in some cases, you're gonna to have to just rely on your Googling skills or your search skills to find threads about 
something that is kind of related to the thing that you have a problem with. I don't know how many times I have landed on a GitHub thread or something like that with, with a problem that, well, they're solving a problem in that thread that's not really my problem, but it's close enough. It gives me a hint to how I can solve my problem. And that is a skill to figure out relevant information that will help you solve the problem. And this is nigh on most of the, what you do as a software developer. Have a great day.